Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and this is on Stark and the topic for today's video is really interesting because I know this is a topic that a lot of people get tensed about, they're, they're like they're searching for it, they don't have, they have no idea and this is one of the topics that you really want to know, you google it, you search it, you ask people, you're trying to ask YouTubers like me, you comment on their videos and you do everything to know that what are the best part-time jobs in Canada. So today I'm going to be talking about the top three part-time job categories in Canada and how it can benefit you and how you can benefit from them to help you survive here in this land of opportunities. So let's go. But before starting this video, I would like all of you to go down and subscribe to my channel because a lot of interesting content is about to come in the future weeks and trust me, it's going to be worth it. So let's get started with it. So the first category of the best part-time jobs here and the most easiest kind of job to get when you arrive here without having any experience, without having any knowledge of how to find a job here. So this first part is going to be like a gold mine for you because when you come here and you don't have any experience, you don't have anything on your resumes, your resume is just your previous education like 12th or your bachelor's, you have done, you have like haven't worked before. So the first and the easiest way to get a part-time job here is to go and apply in unskilled jobs. So what are these unskilled jobs? These are basically the jobs that are available in restaurants or like in some convenience stores. So what you exactly do in these places is you just go there, if you go to a restaurant and you give your resume, the guy is going to ask you if you have any previous experience working in a restaurant or no. Uh, they don't really need this experience, but they just ask for their sake because they just want to know if you have a little experience before doing, before doing any of this uh, restaurant stuff. And if, even if you don't have any experience, it's fine. So what they just want you to do, what you have to just do actually there is like, I work in a Japanese restaurant as a server. So what I have to do there is uh, just serve people. There are these different kinds of meals the customer asks. I just pack them and I give it to them. That's all the work that I do. So these things are not really skilled and you, the employer uh, can teach you these stuff in like two, three days and you're good to go. And so these are the stuff, these are the jobs that don't require a lot of experience or skills. These are just good to go jobs. So when you come here, the, the restaurant jobs and the convenience store jobs, the convenience store jobs are like, uh, you just go and like in any supermarket, you just have to stack up the stuff. Like they're gonna say you bring uh, five or bring, like uh, stock up this stock of um, cans, stock up these uh, pulses or anything or any kind of food stuff. So you just have to manage the store, fill up shelves and maintain the store. That's all you do. Or you can work as a cashier. Uh, like these are all these little, little categories of jobs which are really easy to get. You just go, give your resume, apply. They give, they do an interview if you're job oriented, if they would like to have you on their company and you simply get the job. This is the easiest way and there's no easier way than this without any experience. There's also this one thing about restaurant jobs is like, they're really work intensive. I mean, you don't have a lot of freedom on these jobs because uh, you have to work for like continuous hours. Uh, for example, if I work in a restaurant and uh, their customers are just coming in, coming in, coming in all the time. I mean, I don't even get time to look at my phone. The only break that I get is 15 minutes if I'm doing a five, six hour shift, like 15 minutes. and you just you have to do things constantly so it's like a lot of work and a lot of concentration and attention and you cannot do a lot of other stuff you cannot think about anything else so these are easy jobs but they're like heavily work intensive you have to just work your ass off to make it up and it's they're easy but they're tough that's the bottom line so the second category of jobs is skilled or licensed jobs, what I call it. So what happens is um, uh, in the licensed job market, the most popular, the famous kind of market is the security market. In Canada, every other institution, like maybe maybe a supermarket or a mall or a college or a building, everybody outsources their security. So what they do is they 
give money to these outsourcing security agencies and they pay them money to give them uh, security people. So what these agencies do is like, there are a lot of agencies out here. So what these agencies do is, uh, do is they hire people. Like um, you have to take a security license training for this because in Canada you need license for everything. So what you do is you apply to the security training, which is like um, $400. The training is not very lengthy. It's like, um, some 48 hours of online training so you can stay at home and you can train and um, you just have to really stay at home and just you have to go there for just one day to learn the CPR and the physical stuff that you have to perform in case of, of, of an emergency because as a security person you have a lot of responsibility. So these trainings require like usually a month after a month and uh, after investing $400 you're pretty much good to go and the, uh, the, a good thing about these kind of jobs is um, that um, you are secured. Like these companies usually guarantee like more than 20 hours, like which is 20 hours for students. If you're coming here on your student permit, you're just allowed to work 20 hours. So these companies at least guarantee you 20 hours guaranteed that you will get it. So you don't have to worry about anything else. If, but I didn't knew this at first. So if, if I came here at the beginning, I would directly go and apply to the security stuff because I wasted my three months looking for jobs and I had nothing. And even in winter, these jobs are like guaranteed because everybody needs security. And if you compare it to the restaurant jobs, like in winter or, or the supermarket jobs, they're literally, they cut down the labor force in half. So half of these jobs are gone. And, but in the security fields, everybody needs security. So these jobs are always there. They're not going anywhere. And after, if you gain experience in security for like two, three years, you get paid higher. Like the minimum wage is $14 now, but if you go for like a two year or two, it's gonna raise down 16 or 18 something. Uh, it usually depends on the agency you work for and the place you work for. So these job is like a really good market for people who are new and who can gain some experience. So the pro of these uh, security jobs is uh, that um, these jobs are not really work intensive. These, these are easy jobs. You just have to go there. Like I have a friend who works in security and uh, he just goes to the, his um, construction site. He's, appoint, he's, he's appointed at a construction site for the, for the security. And what he does, he goes there at 7 p.m. and he sleeps there until 6 a.m. and he earns money. A lot of money. I mean, he makes $14 an hour by sleeping. I mean, I don't recommend you to sleep on your job, but like um, you can do your studies while you're on the job and you can do everything else. You can work on your computer. You can make money online from something else while working for this. So you're already getting paid and you are work and you can do other stuff, which is exactly not the case in the restaurant jobs, as I said before. They are very heavily work intensive. You cannot do anything. You just have to work and it's really, really busy and work intensive. Whereas in security, you have a lot of time. You can do stuff, but the only thing is you are responsible here. You have a responsibility on your shoulders and uh, you are responsible for anything that happens, any incident or even that occurs. So it is responsive ability heavy by uh, work low. So it kind of balances the stuff. I, ho I hope you're getting it. Okay. So, and also with the security, I would like to include that. This is not just security. If, you, if you're trying to go in the license fields, there are a lot of jobs. Like um, if you say uh, there are forklift operators, like if you know how to drive a forklift, uh, you can get a license here. Like it's, it's the same like for a month or two. You get a license and the forklift operators get paid a lot because they are like 18 bucks an hour rather than just 40, 40 for other jobs because these are really skilled jobs and you train for them for two months, you get your license in around $400, $500. And you work in factories as a forklift operator and uh, these jobs are really good because uh, you don't get shifts like the restaurants for like four hours, five hours, and you have to go, go like four days a week to complete your 20 hours. In factories, you get a shift like for straight eight, straight eight hours, like or straight 10 hours, so you can like complete your all 20 hours in either two days or three days maximum. That's all. You don't have to go to your work workplace and disturb your study schedule for the rest of the week. So this is a really good perk, and I'm I'm trying to go into this part of jobs, maybe after my second semester. So yeah, that's um, all about the 
license part. So the third and the most easiest way and the most fun way to make money here is driving Uber. <laughs> okay, so it, uh, it might be like, um, we don't have a car, we don't have this, we don't have that. I mean, I get it. Like if you, it does always, things are always balanced. So the way it's balanced here is like, if you get an Uber here, it is the best kind of job you can get as a student because um, you, if you have a car, if you come here and buy a car in like first few months or anything, Uber here is like, everybody takes Uber, like literally everybody. Every other day, if, if I stand outside my college and I count the number of cars that are dropping the students, I can go on forever. Every two minutes or something, like one minute, two minutes, there are like five Ubers already coming in in the morning rush hours. Like everybody needs Uber here. And as an Uber driver here, you can make at least if you work 20 hours. I mean, I, and the, like this is really good benefit. I want to tell you that uh, Uber is not a job, firstly. It is not a job, it's a business. So Uber is considered as a business. So you can work as many hours as you want. You're not limited to 20 hours barrier and you get paid a lot. I mean, in an hour you can make who knows, like five rides, six rides, and you can make 40, 50 bucks an hour. That's like a lot of money. I mean, working hard in a restaurant for one hour to earn this 14 bucks, which is $12 after taxes, rather I would go for an Uber and make my way through it. <laughs> really, I, uh, I have a bunch of friends who drive Uber and they, they live a good life, man. I mean, I mean like, a, um, they earn, even though they're not working like 40 hours a week, they work for 25 and they're still making more than $2,000 a month, which is, you can live a luxury life here in 2,000 bucks, I mean. So the thing here about Uber is uh, you need to have a valid license, G, G2 license actually. And uh, so it's got, it, you, you cannot just directly start with Uber here because like if you don't have license back in India, you need to get here, train for Uber, or, like train for your license and get, and here you don't get license just like that. You have one, you have to wait for one year at least to get your G2 after G, G1, G2. So for at least one year, you cannot drive if you have not driven before in India, but if you get an international license back from, back from India, you have been driving, you have experience there. So it's a short process rather than doing it all over again in Canada. So if you have an international license, I prefer you to convert it from India, from India as an international license so you can come and validate here in Canada. So you don't have to go through all those processes again, which saves a lot of time. And the thing is, um, initial, ex I mean, an investment in car. Like you can buy a car, the cars are cheap. Like you can buy secondhand cars for really, really cheap here. Uh, but the thing is like the if you're over 25, the insurance is gonna be cheap for you. Insurance over 25 is like $150 a month, which is even more like, which, which is still a lot. But I mean, it goes much lower. Uh, if you're under 25, you're done. It's like, and you have no experience, you just got your G2 and everything, your, your monthly in insurance is gonna be like $300. And that's a big chunk of money to pay for insurance. But uh, it's like a thing that you, you are giving up, uh, I mean, money, but you're getting your financial freedom, you're getting, you don't have to work under somebody else, you have, you have more hours to work, you can work on your own terms. And as a student, that's the best thing you can have and that's an perk and advantage of being a student and working on your own terms. It's, it's, it's really beneficial in the long run. So that will be my three best jobs for this video. But in the next video, I'll share you with a lot more jobs. So I'll see you guys in the next video. And the next video is going to be really special. Wait for it because in the next video, I'm going to tell you about the best agent that you can get to study abroad. I know a lot of people are confused about agents and I get a lot of questions about them. In the next video I'll be trying to cover them all, literally, all of them. So thank you for watching this video and giving me your time. So go and subscribe to my channel and share it if you like. And I'll see you next time.